Uh, I welcome you once again to this session. And uh, I believe that uh, we are being blessed. So it is nice to be again in this place. Let us just offer a short word of prayers we will give. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this uh, time. We pray that you may be with us as uh, we look at uh, these essential things. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I don't know. Some of the things we, we are looking into, we, we shall also be able to tackle them during the coming sessions in the sanctuary and, uh, and uh, in, the, in the session of uh, One True God. Uh, uh, I don't know if uh, any of you have ever heard about uh, uh, the teachings about the nature of God before he be, he came to earth, and the nature of God, uh, uh, the nature of Christ before he came to the earth, and the nature of Christ after he came to the earth. Have you ever heard such a thing? Because we, I want us when we tackle these things, we we can now tackle from what point are we tackling them from? We just don't tackle them from the air, but we are addressing something that is also a problem. It will be good. Have you ever heard about uh, the nature that Christ possessed when he was in heaven and the nature that Christ possessed when he came on earth? Has, has any one of you ever heard that? Or it is something new? It is not new mm. because we know mm. all of you have heard yes. that the God is a spirit uh -huh. and even Jesus before he came to the world, he was a spirit. Uh -huh. uh, but the, the Bible frames that the, he was called the word, he was not called the son of God, he was called the word. Before he came on earth? Before he came on earth, according to the book of Genesis 2. And I am first in John, John, the book of John, that in the beginning, the word God can somebody read because I may not put it in. So in the beginning there was the word. The word was with God and yeah. the word was God. Yeah. That beginning, do you think it is of the earth or the other beginning? Do you think it is the beginning of his human being or it was the beginning of the of God? Beginning of the God. Word is his God. Uh -huh. Yeah. Before he became a son. Yeah. Uh -huh. That is what you understand by the nature of Christ before he was born. Yeah. Uh, you talked about Christ being a, a spirit. When you say that uh, before Christ came, he was um, a spirit, does it mean that he didn't have a form or body parts? He didn't have a physical being that you can touch? Yeah. Um, uh, may, may, may I say this? Uh, God does not have a nature. God is a spirit. Mm -hmm. Although he is speaking, let us create or form a man uh, 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 as, as we are. But he is not with, God is not a man. Although the Bible says here in Exodus, Exodus 15 verse 3. Mm -hmm. says that God is in the other fashion it says uh, God is a warrior and the other fashion it says that God is a man of war mm -hmm. uh, this is the way that people can understand God but God is a spirit so 
my question uh, to you, Peter, will be: God has a form. Uh, God does has God form. have a form? Does oh. He have? Is He physical, tangible, like you are physical? No, no, no. Tangible. no, no. What do you understand? Is He physical? Can you touch Him? I mean, when we go to heaven, will we be able to see somebody oh, with the form that you can touch and all that? What do you understand? I'm sorry. I can't say. Mm -hmm. um, he, in the book of Genesis, when, he, he, when it talks about creation, uh -huh. when he created, when they created uh, uh, Adam, uh -huh. it says uh -huh. that God always came during the cool hours of the day. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, when Adam and Eve sinned, uh -huh. when God was drunk or was passing, uh -huh. he didn't come. Adam. Uh, yeah. Adam and Eve, they ran that way. Yes. So I can say. <laughs> he has a physical form. Yeah. It is somebody you can greet, yeah. you can touch, he has a body part. But Peter, I believe he does a, you've told that and believe <laughs> that he has a form. <laughs> Uh, he is a spirit, yeah. and uh, Mama is saying he has a, a physical form. Mm -hmm. Now, my question to you, to the two of you, will be because I don't have any question concerning that, Mama. Yeah. When um, the Bible says that uh, the elders, seventy elders of Israel, saw God, and at His feet. It was like a sapphire stone. I heard that you were told that in the sanctuary. It was being read from Exodus, I think, but chapter 23, uh, that, uh, at that point. That um, under his feet, if God doesn't have a form, how is it that somebody saw some, something under his feet? And if God is a spirit that doesn't have physical form that you can touch, how is it that God is seated on his throne? You know, uh, uh, can you say? Uh, okay. Can you try to say before I say? Because I know what. Um, I'm really. I have that foundation. So I want you to and uh, to say the nice. I say. What you can say before you say? We learned in the morning that God physically is in heaven, but His spirit. He is in the world. So when he comes to the world, he comes in, in the spirit, in, in the spirit. Even when he created the world, he created through spirit. It is yes. voice. Yes, Peter. Okay. You hear something? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking that I can say. God, ah. God is a uh, spirit. Why am I saying so? When he was speaking to Moses, uh -huh. he came in a form of a fire. Yes. So I cannot say that any other I can say is a form of a fire or a form, a form of a Can I say, my brother, God has many attributes. Hmm. But now we are talking about okay. does God have a physical so, form. As you taught us yesterday, you say that the spirit of God, the voice of God. Yeah. How can how can you think of this verse? Uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Can you read? He, they heard the voice of God when God was walking, walking mm -hmm. in the garden. They heard the voice. But they still walking. Genesis 3, 8. 6, 6, 3, 6, 6, 9, 6. Yeah. Starting from Genesis 3, 6, upward, downwards. Genesis 3, 6. Hmm? Genesis 3, 6, or 8. And when the woman, uh, that's what I was saying. Yeah, was saying. Eight, when they heard the voice of the Lord, God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. 
in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid himself from the presence of Lord of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Yeah, they had they the heard this, this sound. When God was walking, the when a person is walking, you can hear. They had the 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 walking the workings of God. The walking. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, this is what I can I can be taught now. Here, the Bible advice that he is, he, God has a body, because Jesus Himself, He was He was God. Once God uh, tried to reach us, He used the Maria or Mary. In, uh, in the videos, you see Jesus, his body, but we have ever and ever seen the God, his body. Yeah. So, as the Bible, because we know that the Bible is written in a, a high standard, does not regret. Today, my teacher, you may teach us and know God is uh, image, really. And we support that thing. Yes, go ahead, Mama Sarah. Through, through John chapter, chapter 1, verse 10 to 14. It says, He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world, the world did not know him. He came to his home, and his home did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we have this glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, Apo, the Inasema, the Word was made flesh. Now, God is the Word, or Jesus is the Word. Now, He has the authority to be the flesh. And he has the authority to be the spirit. Okay. Mm, it's interesting. You're 14, verse 14, the Bible. And the word was made flesh. Now, in the beginning, the, there was the word, and the word was the word, and the word was God. <coughs> now, God can is in is in in our form. Let me just come to that. Uh, I'd like us to look at uh, Exodus chapter twenty four. Question again as we look at it. Um, we are looking at the nature of Christ before mm -hmm. the fall and after. Uh, I mean, uh, the nature of Christ before He came onto earth. And uh, I was asking you, have you heard about that? And we entered into the issue uh, that uh, does God have a physical form? And Christ have a physical form? And uh, you say that he has a physical form. They say that God is a spirit and has no physical form or cannot be touched. Uh, but uh, before I come to the nature of Christ, maybe when we talk after the fall and before the fall, in, in, in the book of Exodus, those who are saying that, um, that God is a, is a spirit and Christ was a spirit and don't have a physical form, they cannot be touched. And I was asking you to look uh, at uh, Exodus 24, verses uh, 
starting from verses 9. Moses, Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abu, and the seventy elders of Israel went up and saw the word of Israel. And his feet was something like a pavement made of ladies, lilies as bright blue, bright blue as, as the sky. Yes, so God has feet. Mm. Now, they, they saw here there is uh, something else. Here. Uh -huh. And Moses, the seven elders, went out. And the truth they God of Israel. They yes. saw. Yeah. Something that is not physical, you cannot you see. You cannot see it. Yes. So God has a physical form. Yeah. Isaiah, is it Isaiah? Let me see if it's an Isaiah. I don't write it down. Is it Isaiah? Before I go to Daniel. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. It says, In the year that the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on, the, on a throne, and the train of Israel filled the temple. So, God can sit. Yeah. You cannot sit if you don't have a physical form. The last one, the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 7. Mm. Daniel chapter 7, are you there? 7. From verse 9. It says, As I looked, thrones were set in a place. Verse 9. Yes. Thrones were set in a place, and it is the ancient of days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with the fire and his wheels was a, a, a blaze. So he has a head and he has hair and he sits on the throne. Even when the, the three men who looked at through Daniel, Meshach, uh, and Abednego. The, the third person was with those, the fourth. Was like the son of God. But the other person was seen in that part. So the Bible was, was, was the, it was the son of God. The son of God. So they had God they, himself. No, no, the son of God is not God is, himself. The son of God is the son of God. The son of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they have a physical form. Yeah. God is not something immaterial that you cannot touch. God is somebody you can touch. And so he has a physical form. But God can manifest himself in a spiritual form. He can change. So like the angels can change themselves to humans yeah. and come and be amongst the people. God has all the abilities. The question I was asking is about the nature of Christ. Before Christ came to this earth, he had uh, the likeness of God, sinless and all. He didn't have this flesh. In incarnation, he took upon this nature, the likeness of the sinful flesh of a human being. And in him, in that uh, human nature, actually, he hid his divinity, his divinity was hid there. Uh, uh, the, the, the next thing you will find when you are doing your gospel campaign is about the sanctuary. Yeah. Have you ever heard about the sanctuary? Mama, you were raised up a seven day and have, have you ever learned about the sanctuary so much? Not, uh, no, not into details. Not into details. Mm -hmm. And you, brothers? Um, uh, I'm, I'm not born. I'm, I'm not born. You okay? have not gone deeper. Um, so, have we ever heard about what is the longest time prophecy? Mm -hmm. 
Have you ever heard about the longest process in the Bible? No, no, no. no. Okay, then uh, that, that one, maybe when we are, we'll be dealing with the cleansing of the sanctuary tomorrow. Tomorrow on the Sabbath we shall be dealing with the cleansing of the sanctuary and yeah. what it means to us. When the sanctuary is cleansed, what is actually uh, cleansed. You know, my brother, mm. <coughs> you have asked something that I, I must, I, I was supposed to, to answer that yes, because I don't want to, to say something which I, I am not. Yes. I want to say what I am now. Mm. Because some days, some days ahead here, you will use me, choose me to do something. You know, as you say that you were in salvation and as a, a member of that church, it is not far that uh, I come to the Seventh Day Adventist where I am a pastor. So, I'm very glad to be under your feet because you are going to teach me deeper or now I uh, teach others. Yeah. So, I was in another region. You were in? Uh, I was also in PhD. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was in PhD. In your theology you did in PhD. In yeah. PhD, not yeah. in not in, not in SDA. But they adopted me. Or oh, the SDA took you yeah. as a pastor. Yeah. But you were in PhD, that is where you did your theology. Yeah. Even okay. my 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 certificate, my diploma, my certificate. My, it is in PhD. Yeah, even not my in degree. In Theology. It is in the PhD, yeah. not SDA. Yeah. Oh, uh, this now is what I, I want you to know. Yeah. Because you may tell me, how can this pastor be of Seventh day Adventist and he has never heard about this thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? No, you but I, I cannot wonder. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be ashamed of it. There are people who are Seventh day Adventists, they are pastors, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they don't know yeah. some of the things we are talking because we are taking the Bible as it reads. Yeah. Uh, without any human interpretation. Yeah. And so, when people go to college, they can be taught things, yeah. which actually, when you start verifying from the Bible, you find that it's not there. Yeah. You see uh, that? Yeah. Like, people have been taught Trinity, people have PhD in Trinity. Yeah. But is it in the Bible? It is not in the Bible, but they have gone and they have a PhD. Yeah. And they are getting salaries over 200,000, they are getting 100,000 as salary. Yeah. But is treated in the Bible? It is not. So, going to the college to get a degree or a PhD does not mean now you are learning. Yeah. No, you are not. A fisherman can come from the ocean and teach you the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. A small baby of two years can receive a revelation from God and teach you. Yeah. Going to college does not mean that now you are more closer to God. No. than a little child who is born. And so your degrees and you got in PhD mm -hmm. and uh, the Seventh Day Adventist adopted you as a pastor. Yeah. There are many things which are not being taught from Seventh Day. They are being not taught in Seventh Day Adventist. Yeah. And uh, there is also another thing that um, uh, about sin. Are we born sinners or do we choose sin? Have you ever heard about this doctrine? For your understanding, what do you understand? Are we born sinners or sin is a choice? They say that all of I was taught that if there's we are born being we born sinners. sinners. Yes. This is according to the sin that Adam did. Ah. Yeah. When we come up, we repent, we become reunited with our Christ, our Savior. That's how I know. That is what also Peter, brother Peter, you know? Yeah. And Mama, what would you teach in PhD? Are, are you born sinners or sin is a choice? We are born of sin, but if you choose to, to remain there, yeah. it is your choice. It is your choice. So are we born sinners or are we born of sin? Well, you know, those two things are different. You are born sinner sin. and you are born of, of sin. sin. We are born of sin. And not born sinners. Mm. Sin is a choice. Uh, you know, the way we believe Brother Peter yeah. actually interferes with everything yeah. or corrects everything. Yeah. 
if you say, let us say you say we are born sinners, yeah. you know what it means that um, we have sinned. Mm -hmm. And it changes the meaning of sin. Sin is the transgression of the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So while you are being born as a baby, what law have you transgressed? Being born? No, they, they just put that the, you know, our. As father, Adam, in yeah, Adam motif. Yeah, yeah. There's something called in Adam motif. Because Adam sinned, mm -hmm. then everyone that is born. Yes, but Romans say that we have all fallen short of glory. Yeah. yeah. Which means that when Adam sinned, now we need the glory of God back. Yeah. But doesn't that that doesn't mean per se we are born sinners? Because a small child who is born has not sinned by being born. Yeah. He has to choose to sin because sin is the transgression of the law. That's how it is. We are not born sinners. We are born separated from God because Adam was separated from the Garden of Eden. Yeah. And so God made a sanctuary that we may be reconciled. You know, it will be something, uh, it, it alters the Bible transgression, the, the, the sin is transgression of the law. Because a baby who doesn't know good or wrong, how can you say that he has transgressed the law? Yes. That he, he has not. Yeah. But he's born separated from God because he's from Adam. Yeah. And the righteousness of Christ must cover that child for that child to enter heaven. Yes, he's not born a sinner, but he's born needing a savior. Yeah. Because he is born under of sin. He is born of sin. Yeah. Under the lineage of sin. Now he has to accept the second Adam. Mm -hmm. And if he dies before reaching the age of maturity, we leave that to God. He is the one to decide if this child is lost forever or will be saved. Because he knows the future. Yeah. If this child could have been a grown up, the choices the child could have made. Mm -hmm. And so... Sin is, is a choice now. Sin is a choice. Yeah. Basically, sin is a choice. Okay. Being born is not sin. Yeah. <laughs> so you cannot say I'm a born of sin. You are born of sin. Yeah. David says that I was shaped in sin, in my mother's womb. It means that he came from the lineage of the first Adam who fell in sin and he was separated from the from garden of Eden. Is it? Yeah. He was separated. And now we have to come back to the garden of Eden. Yeah. It is through Christ alone. It is a choice. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, there is um, uh, there is another doctrine that affects the doctrine of Victor over sin. We understand Victor over sin? That somebody who can have Victor over sin and live a righteous life? Mm -hmm. Is it possible? That is that, is, that, is that who can see that, that in the PhD. You don't have that uh, command which says if Victor over sin. Victor over sin. Uh -huh. You don't have that. Victor over sin is the teaching that um, we can have Victor over sin mm -hmm. if Christ is in us. Okay. But um, there is another teaching that affects that teaching so much. Okay. Somebody may ask you, like I may ask you, uh, which power did Christ use to overcome sin? His power or his father's power? His, his father's, father's power. power. His father's power. Yeah. Mama, what do you think? He, the, yeah, he was given power yes. by God. So he never used, he used so what we are saying that he never used his divinity to overcome sin, mm -hmm. but he used the power of God. Mm -hmm. You know, you was given the power. God, His breath was in Jesus. Yes. As Jesus, His breath is in the believer. Yes. So, yeah. as he, uh, the breath of Jesus, uh, the breath of God was in Jesus. So, He used that power to overcome the sin. But uh, you can. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. Okay. Hebrews 9, 14. Uh, I hope my questions are not difficult. Because they help me understand what I'm dealing with. They are not. Uh, <laughs> if they are difficult, you tell me. No. Difficult. My brother, you know, we are the class. <laughs> we cannot be ready that you, know, you are asking it a question that is very hard for us to answer. Hebrews 9 14. Okay. Hebrews 9. How much more 
then with the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself and blemished to God. Please have consistency. Was it in a 9.14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God? So it is through the eternal spirit that Jesus Christ was able to overcome sin. It was not him, but he chose the will of the Father. And also we can overcome sin by choosing the will of the Father. By the spirit working in us. We can have victory over sin. And we shall be continuing to see that in the sanctuary. So, although Christ was God and his, his divinity was veiled in flesh, he overcame sin by the power of God. Yeah. Note, he never used his divinity, he emptied himself. He came to live as a human being to give us an example. Yeah. So that by his example also we may overcome sin. Okay. By depending on the Father, he overcomes sin. Christ, by depending on the Father, he overcomes okay. sin. And um, uh, this is now, this is, uh, I don't know how I'll put this, but uh, um, there's a question on marriage. I, I hope uh, all of you have been married once and you're still in that marriage. Yeah? You are still in the first marriage that you are in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, eh? yes, yes. So, uh, people say that, uh, can you give the, maybe if somebody asks you, can you give the only reason why you can get remarried or divorce? First of all, which is the only reason that can make you have divorce? If you commit the sin of a daughter, yeah. uh, and which law allows you to be married again? Can you be married again after yes. you be married? If, eh? if you marry, you have, you have, you have committed adultery. If you marry somebody who is being out of his marriage, yes. Um, will still commit adultery. Will still commit adultery. But what uh, the Bible says, if the one whom is free now from his husband or his, uh, his wife mm. uh, is free from the role, once the one who was united with him is not there. Has died or he? When we say yeah. when if a man a man dies, yes, a woman has a right a right to be married again. Okay. Yeah. Even the man. Even the man has a right to marry. Yeah. But while they are still alive and in divorce, they are not allowed. They are not allowed. Not allowed. So that, that's a question that people, you know, many churches fall because they want to compromise on um, uh, such a issues. And uh, again. This is found in the sanctuary message. I don't know if we have learned about um, the health message. Like uh, you have been observing here, maybe we have been de de doing things different from maybe what you do. So have, you ever, have we ever learned about the health message? Health. Mm. Yes. You have said yes. Health message. So just Maybe he has learned in his church or in his own studies. It's not a must you be taught in church, yeah. but it is studies you can do on yourself. Yeah. As you can say, I mean, we can say that uh, if using our uh, say meat, it's not good for our health. That is what I mean. Yeah. We have we learned about this thing. As you are a person, Peter, you have learned about it. And the elder Peter, yeah, have yeah. you ever learned about the health message? Uh, but your own studies, maybe in church, in church, or... in church we, have, we have learned about this because we can say you cannot take a tea leaves. We can say, people say, take even a little food. When I see, I speak of food, I mean you guy. Do not take it. Mm. Uh, I see, rattle. 
Yes. Take it. <laughs> Don't be glad of it. Yeah. Have temperance. Yeah. Don't just eat yeah. and eat and eat. Okay. Uh, we have learned about this. But uh, you can say it. <laughs> Ten percent. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you learn about the health message in PhD? This in your church, do you learn about it? Not always. Yeah. But the, the PhD do not uh, speak about the health. And they will, well, they bring it only the families. You have come meetings as PhD? Yeah. Family, no. family life. Yeah, not family. Family life, we don't have. We, yes, we can have uh, when we have uh, yeah. women conference. They can speak, but they do talk on how the women stay with their husband in the sight of sexually and uh, uh, handling the husband well before he, he becomes out of his marriage. For the woman now, she can keep his husband not going out. So that, that, that's basically family. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, health, you don't do a lot about it? Not a lot. They don't teach about uh, you can be a vegetarian and live a good life. Mm -hmm. and so you are not a vegetarian, do you? No. <laughs> you <laughs> just take anything that comes uh, mm -hmm. before uh, us. Have, have you embraced vegetarian? Yeah. No. Yeah. But these things you understand they are good. Yeah. And uh, but God had original that yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, when they were in a, in a, which, which, which Babylon in uh, Daniel chapter one. I think it's uh, is that one. It's when the they one. were in prison. Yes. They they commanded the the they commanded to the be master. allowed. Yeah. To be allowed to take it to veg vegetables, vegetables uh, not meat. Not the king's food. Yeah. That was uh, wine and uh, and meat and. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, and they, they look very nice. Ten times. Yeah, after I think ten days. Ten days. Uh -huh. So about the, about the vegetable, it's good to our health. When uh, even our forefathers, we read that who we were taking vegetables yeah. lived very many years. Yeah. That. We would take flesh. Yeah. The people would take flesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we would take flesh. And so you understand the health message is important. Yeah. You know, what I'm trying to bring out, I, I, I'll deal with the sanctuary. I'm coming with the sanctuary. I'll yeah. display everything there and yeah. we go through it. You ask questions. I don't want to rush through many things. Yeah. I want us to live here at least understanding, not having notes. Yeah. No, no, no. A person can not take notes but understand. Yeah. A person can take notes and okay. they are not understanding. Yes. So I want us to understand. That is why you will see I, I want when I come to the sanctuary, I know what to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't want just to throw out information. So you understand Eden was lost yeah. through Adam. Yeah. And Eden has to be restored okay. through Adam also. Yeah. When you read Genesis chapter 1, man is given a certain diet. Yeah. He enters into sin and then add, some things are added. But when you come to Revelation 22, when now Eden is being restored, have you ever looked at the, the diet of Genesis 22? I've read about from verse 8 to 12. Yes, the fruits and the leaves and all that. Yeah. There is no flesh. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when I'll be dealing with the cleansing of the sanctuary, I'll show you why actually health reform is important. Because you you, you said in Daniel, they were wiser. Mm -hmm. That is it. Health reform helps us to be wiser and be able to understand the things of God. Mm -hmm. There are some foods, articles of food when you take, the mind is exhausted in helping digestion in the stomach. So when God speaks, you cannot comprehend well because the brain is overwhelmed because of what is in the stomach. Mm -hmm. And so health reform helps our digestion. And when our digestion is helped, 
the mind is fresh to understand what God is speaking to us. So healthy reform is very important. In fact, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, write it down. Whether you eat or whether you drink, do it for the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Uh, there's another thing in the sanctuary. And uh, in passing, uh, we have looked at the health reform. And uh, I, I don't know, Sister Sarah, mm -hmm. uh, have you ever heard about dress reform? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good manner of dressing, mm -hmm. being presentable mm -hmm. according to mm -hmm. men and uh, women. Yes, mm -hmm. distinction of dresses. Mm -hmm. According to First uh, Corinthians 11, 4, from, from 1 to 4. Even from the sanctuary standpoint, because the way of God is in the sanctuary, it is better to deal with the sanctuary. In the sanctuary, the priest Yes. There was, so, have you ever heard about the dress reform? How women should dress, how men should dress? And is it taught in the church? And, uh, I've said, um, first Corinthians 11. 11. Let, let the women have. It just uh, teaches on how, on how a man could uh, dress, you know, he would not... That is about praying and teaching. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, if God allows, I'll go to that. But what I wanted to introduce is this in the sanctuary, because mm -hmm. it is the sanctuary that we are coming to. Yeah. Uh, this reform is also an important thing. Yeah. There is a particular way the high priest used to dress. Yeah. And so God wants us to dress in a particular way. I'm not saying that you dress like that man, but there's a principle behind it. Mm -hmm. So another thing that is important, if you have never heard about dress reform, you say you have heard it and they teach in the church. Yeah. Uh, so maybe just tell us briefly about the dress reform, how you teach it. It will be good to hear from you, not to tell you what I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, we are supposed to wear to wear clothes which cover the which cover the hips yes. and the the legs yes. because of, uh, we we as women yes. we are made beautiful yes. So you can make someone to fall. Okay. Uh, you understand what she's saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to understand, but I'm uh, asking yes. even uh, hair dressing. Yes. Can can make any can make people to fall from the from God. Yes. So there are some main things we are supposed to, uh, we are supposed to do. Yes. Even wearing the earrings. Uh, this way, you see the no <laughs> strings. Yeah. Uh, dressing, yeah. 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 The, the fingers. The yeah. nails. Painting. Yes. The nails. Those all those things are uh, about uh, to be a Christian is forbidden. Yeah. So, how can I, how can I, uh, wearing of a ring, a vest, uh, uh, make you to to fall? That is a question you are asking me. Yeah. How can wearing of a ring yeah, just uh, make somebody to fall? Uh, that's a good question, and uh, I'd like to say this. We are told in the Bible, the book of First Peter, that uh, you were read yesterday that the ornament of the meek spirit. Yeah. But um, the wearing of these things turns you from looking to God and thinking about your own beauty. 
The time that is should be spent in seeking God is spent on adorning yourself. And so it brings exaltation to self instead of Christ. And you know, when you sin, it doesn't affect you only. Even if you commit a private sin, mm -hmm. it will not affect you only. Now, somebody can ask, by just wearing the earrings yes. and uh, this, this is my own life. How is it affecting somebody? You see, when you influence, your appearance influences people who look at you. And the children can be led in desiring these things which are vanity, they are nothing. And now, when they are led to desire these things and they do not get them, they are frustrated in their lives and they start being envious, they start being jealousy, they start thinking that they were not born in the right family. You see, you are just doing for your own sake, decorating yourself, but another person is feeling that now they are out of place. They cannot afford these things, so they are not normal or that. That's why God says that, be plain, grace plain. I made you like this, remain this. And uh, you know, these are the things that led even the devil to fall. We are told in Ezekiel chapter 28, he saw that he was so beautiful, so beautiful and handsome. And then he, he didn't think that continuing to follow God was something important, and then, then he fell away. And so, even if I commit private sin, sins that affects only my soul, if somebody sees it, it affects them in some way or another. If I do a good thing, it affects somebody positively. If I do something which is bad, it affects somebody negatively, even though I'm the one doing it and I have not involved somebody else. And so, the wearing of these things uh, makes people praise you and not praise God. You, you understand. People say, oh, so and so is like this and this. Yeah, and so the glory do not, do not go to God, but goes to uh, man. And so, when you read Ezekiel chapter 28, we shall see that man was given dress to cover his nakedness. For beauty and to cover his nakedness. And uh, Mama Sarah has told us that they were taught to dress and cover their legs downwards and the so hands has to be. We can cover with a trouser, sit, <laughs> sit back. Men are, uh, uh, men are uh, designed to wear that. And women, are, they have their own clothing. We are told that women should not have men's clothing and men's, men should not have women's clothing in the book of Deuteronomy. So there is a distinction of dress. Uh, and uh, we are told, um, uh, I don't know, Mama, I'm sorry to ask this, but uh, it's good also to know. What, what kind of gift do you have for the minute? For ministering to the children of God, have you realized what is your talent, or has God called you to work in some capacity in the church? And which capacity? I mean, this is not something that you are trained, but something that is inborn. You understand the difference between skill, skill. talent, and a gift. You, you uh, skill is something you get from a school. Yeah. But you are quiet. Yeah. Thank you so much. But a gift is something in both. Inside, it comes from God. Do you have such a college? And have you realized it? Which one? Singing. Singing. Is there anything else? Praying. Praying. You are a prayer warrior. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That is great. Brother Peter. Yeah. Yes. Would you, would you, it's not a feeling. <laughs> you know, people think that it's a feeling. No, 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 it's not a feeling. I know it is not a character. Because it's something what, that you get from God. What is the call that God has given to you? I'm an evangelist. An evangelist. I can try to teach, but I'm uh, around 90% of an evangelist. Amen. And Brother Vit? Yeah, I can teach you lessons to say young men yeah. and uh, girls. Uh, 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 also, 
I can I I can visit the world. Amen. Yeah. Uh Prasamas, you know. Yes. When I was in PhD, yeah. I cannot preach but I can I can I am a crowd mover. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Uh, maybe the last two questions. Yeah. And then we, we can look at the sanctuary. You can take a break and we come and look at the sanctuary, then we have lunch. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you can ask the question that you have. Yeah. Then uh, we take a break. We come for the sanctuary and then we take lunch and break yeah. until the Sabbath, the welcoming of the Sabbath. You go prepare your clothes and your shoes. Yeah. Uh, 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 this is what uh, you have come to my question, which I was just trying to ask mm -hmm. we washed our clothes mm -hmm. we hung it there where we slept mm -hmm. is there a problem no 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 so there's the issue of uh tithe and offering in the church yeah. have you ever no heard about that let let peter start let let peter start you answer, I conclude with it. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, with, with, let me start from uh, offering. Ah. And uh, offering is every, we say every Saturday. Ah. And uh, at times, some, some churches, hmm. is every, every Saturday. Or bowling and the time, mm -hmm. but about uh, other other churches, mm -hmm. or the the tight is a uh, uh, element. Yeah. So w when you talk about tight, what do you understand? Don't mix them. What what, what do you understand by tight? What can I say? You can use money to <laughs> money. Or the, is there any percentage? Yeah, there's a percentage. Uh -huh. You can say that uh, if you get, uh, for example, 1,000, yeah. you pay 10% of it. Which is? Uh, uh, how do you understand the tithing offering? I, I just come back to that. Mama, how do you understand the tithing system and offering? The tithing system mm. is, uh, we are, it is a command from God. Mm -hmm. So we must tithe. Mm -hmm. When you get, what you get, mm -hmm. you give ten percent of it as a, church. to as a tithe. As a tithe. And then and the offering, yes. You have to give the you can give as you as, as much, much as, as you you mm will. -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, you you had something? Yeah. Yes. Uh, tight and offering. <coughs> I want I want you to read Mark chapter chapter three verse nine to ten. Mark or Mark? Malachi chapter three. Mark 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 Malachi Mark three three chapter three verse eight to ten. Can you read? Malachi. Mama, you have that the pipe will be defined as. Why? You, see, you, you see. have not changed that pipe. Buy a new one. Chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. We buy a new one. Verse 10. Uh, Try to be louder. Three times. Three times. Yes. Three times. 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 Three from Three times. 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 Three Will a man rob God? Yes. Yet you have robbed me. But you say in what way have we robbed you? Mm -hmm. 
in the tights and overings. In the tights and overings. Yes. So he is going to frame his the tight and the overing. Yes. Okay. You are cursed with the curse. Mm -hmm. For you have robbed me, even this old nation. Bring all the tights into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and the bowl out for you such presents that there will not be room enough to receive it. So, in, okay, okay, yeah. in, in living time, yes. it's a command of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. According to what you have earned, if you have a salary of 3,000, you must give. Before you give the offering, you give the 10% of the income of your earning. Yes. You give 300. Once you give 300 as an offering or an a tithe, then you decide by yourself to give the, the offering. Now, the offering does not have a uh, limit. You can give even 1,000, you can give even 200, you can give 100, even 50 shillings as you would. But the 10%, the, uh, the type is a must that if you, 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 you give under God, yes, the character that you are a cast person. In, 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 in this uh, book, Mark chapter 2, verse 3, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. God is just putting uh, the dung of our ovaries and tithes onto our forehead. Can you read it? Mm -hmm. Two, three. Mm -hmm. Behold. It was just, it was just cautioning the priest who does not speak the the the, the rule of uh, of tithing and offering. Yes. It was just cautioning them. So yes, behold, I will rebuke your descendants. Can you start from verse two? It's when we will stay. We will have a statement. Yes, it says you are you will not hear, and if you. We will not take it to heart to give glory, hosts. I will send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have cursed them already because you do not take it to heart. Behold, I will rebuke your descendants and spread reviews on your faces, the, re the reviews of your so men. How does your fashion say? How does your fashion say? If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, said the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yeah, I have cursed them already because you do not lay it to heart. Yeah. Verse 3 mm -hmm. Behold, I will corrupt your seed yeah. and spread down upon That's your what faces. I wanted. Mm -hmm. I will spread down. Down, yeah. wow, how can you, do you know that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> God spreads down onto our faces. Once we do not uh, give the, the tithes, uh, we are cast. Before we face our cast, once we are going for uh, giving, once we lay our hands, give the, the tithes while it is under God he has sprinkled tongue onto our forehead and so the tithing and the offering system is so it is uh, is a must yeah. so I'm asking you on uh, that uh, tithes and over um, we say when you you give oh, over it and the tides. Uh -huh. Nobody to see or to know how much you have paid. Yes. But some charges 
you said you have gone some churches, you see the way they they conduct. They can put something in front of that and you wait. if it's one thousand you bet that people see somebody has paid five hundred, two hundred, one thousand, then is it good? Uh the, the, the system the, the system of tithing and offering is of God and um, putting in envelope and giving to the treasure is not a bad thing. And the motive of giving is important. Yes. Yeah. Why are you giving? For the people to see you or you are returning what belongs to God. So we can have here something that people can come and draw. This is tithe and this is offering. Yes? Yeah. And if the motive is that people may see you, you are not returning what is for God, you have a wrong motive. But if they have put here something you may drop in, you are tight and here you drop your offering, uh, I, I don't see it as a much problem. The motive of giving is what is so much important. You remember the woman dropping a coin that's and Christ saw That's where I wanted it to come. Christ saw the coin. Did he see it? And he said the woman has given the best. What? Yeah, she has given what she had. And it was the best because of the motive and what she had given. So somebody can see you putting because you have to identify tithe and offering because they have to be used also differently. Yes. You know tithes are to spread the gospel, yeah. to pay the people who are in the field spreading the gospel. It's not used for church building, it is not used for buying chairs, it is not used for uh, clothing the orphans or the, the widows. That is not the work of the 10% the type. Type was for the levites, those who are ministering in the sanctuary. Mama, you understand that? Yeah. It is paid for the people who are working in the sanctuary. Where, where do we read this? Because sometimes we are not being defined uh, the, the, the offering and the tithes are supposed to be given the, uh, the, the offerings and the, the widows and the widowers. No, 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 no. So, some the book of uh, Numbers chapter. as a dwelling for his name, and say to the priest in all his at that time, and declare to thee to the Lord your God that I have come to the land, the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. The priest shall take the basket from your hands and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. That is the tomb. 
I want you to go to Numbers chapter 18. 18, not 26. 18. 18. 18 verse. Read verse 20, brother. 18 verse 21. Go ahead and read it. We are talking about the 10%, which is yeah. tithes, isn't it? Yeah. That is the thing. It's 20, oh. read it. It says, Then the Lord said to Aaron, You, you shall have no inheritance in their land, in their land. nor shall in their land, mm -hmm. nor shall you have any portion among them. I am your portion, and you are inheritance among the children of Israel. 21. Behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tithes in Israel as an inheritance in return for the work which they perform, the work of the tabernacle of meeting. Yes, I have given them 10%. 10%. For those who work in the tabernacle, for those who work in the sanctuary, mm. it is not for orphans, it is not for widows, it is not for building the church. It is for the people who work in the sanctuary. Yeah. 1821. And also read verse 24. Go ahead and read verse 24. 24. Oh, 24 says, The tithes of the children of Israel, which they offer up as a, a, a heap offering to the Lord, I have given to the Levites as an inheritance. Therefore, I have said to them, among the children of this side, they shall have no inheritance. Yes, so the 10% is for the people who are working in the church, the pastors and the priests, and the priests and the sons of Levi. Yeah. It is not for building the church. Mm. It's not for orphans. It's not for widows. Now we come to the offering. Well, there is a Over. verse uh -huh. I've not understood. Yes. Yeah, here 26, Deuteronomy 12 to 13. Deuteronomy 12. Good. Deuteronomy 12. 26, 12. Deuteronomy 26. 12 to 13. 26. Which verse are you saying? Deuteronomy? Uh, Deuteronomy 26. 12. 26. 12. Mm -hmm. It says, Yes. When you have finished laying aside all the tithe of your increase in the third year, the year of tithing, and have given it to the Levites. The strange, the fatherless, and the widow, so that, that they, they may eat and then you are get and live. So you find there there is a type that is given to the widows, to the yeah. fatherless, yeah. and the foreigners. And the foreigners that is the strangers. Yeah. Very true, Mama. We have what we call the first type, ten percent. It goes to the Levites. But um, there is what we Number call... Number 13. Uh, then you shall say before the Lord your God, I have removed the holy tithe from my house and also have given them to the Levites, the strange, the fatherless, and the window according to all your command. commandments, which you have commanded, com commanded me. Huh? Yes, you commanded me. I have not transgressed your commandments, nor have I forgotten them. So this is it. Now, allow me to illustrate something. We have the, what you have got, everything you have got, okay? And um, the first column, we have what we call the first type, 10%. Which is specifically for the preachers. Yeah. The second column we have what we call the second type. 
this second tithe, let us say you have 300 shillings. The first tithe is how much? 30, 30 shillings, that is for the Levite. Yeah. You are remaining with how much? 270. 270. There is another 10% of that. Yeah. That you will bring to the sanctuary to help in the work of the Levites. So, I don't I understand that one. Hmm. So, we, we, we have removed it. Just percent. draw a column. <laughs> that person. Take a book and draw a column yeah. in now, the back. My question hmm. is, who is giving this now the 10% to draw. the widows and the fatherless? Draw the column. Right. That is where we are going. Is it the... No, no, no. Right. Draw the column as he has said. We have. Where you are supposed to. We have the first ten percent. Ten percent, and then in the second column we have the second ten percent. Second ten percent, which is also a tithe because a tithe has a specific. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we, we have first type, mm -hmm. yeah. first type, mm -hmm. then second type, mm -hmm. then in third column put their offerings. Offer. You know this thing has never been done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Has never been taught. And I want to show you from the Bible, not from what we are speaking. So in uh, in the first column, Brother Peter, I want you to write this. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you this. Numbers chapter 18, verses 21 to 24. First time. Yeah. 18, 21 to 24. 18 verses. 21 to 24. And then in the second column, you have what we call second type. That is where she is reading from. First of all, she read from um, um, Deuteronomy 26, verse 12 to 13. Deuteronomy 26. 26, 12 to 13. Mm -hmm. 26. This is it. Uh, 26. I'm looking for a verse, a particular verse. Which verse did you read? 12. 12 to 13. So, 12 to 13, we have the second type. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 26. 12 to 13. It's another 10 percent. So, can, can we say it's for investing? No, everything you get as an income, you have the first time and you have the second time. Okay. Whether it be, you know, today people don't have farms but they go to job. Yeah. They are uh, employed, is it? Yeah. So, that is an income. The Israelites they are saying you are farm because Israelites had only farms. farms. They didn't have any other jobs. But today we have jobs. So we have 10% from 330. And then you are remaining with? 360. No, 270. 270. So from 270 we have the second column which is another 10%. Yeah. That is 27 shillings. Yeah. So there... It goes to the second tithe. Now the first tithe is for the Levites only, those who are preaching. Are we understanding each other? If you have a question, just ask. We are free. Okay? So the first 10% is for who? For the Levites. Or the pastors. Yes. The second, the 30%. No, no, no. We are talking about the first tithe. First for the tithe. pastors. Tithe. Is for the pastors of the churches. Which is for the yes. Mm -hmm. 
The second tithe is also 10 shillings, but you are tithing from how much? From 270. From 270, is it? Yeah. So you will have 27 bob, which is 10% of that. Yeah. The second tithe is what they are talking about. The windows. And the windows. You can bring it in the sanctuary. They used to bring it in the sanctuary so that the Levites, the widows, may be catered for. They gave the first year, the second year, and then verses, uh, verses 12. Mama, read it. It says, when you have finished the setting inside a tent, as a tenth of all your produce in the third year. Hmm. The year of the tithe you shall give it, you shall give it to the Levite, the wilderness, the fatherless, and the widows, so that they may eat in your towns and be satisfied. So this is it. Look here. You have your first column, ten yeah. percent for the pastors. You that is thirty from three hundred. You have from 270, you have 10%, which goes to the sanctuary to help in the work of the Lord. The widows, okay? Now, in the third year, have you seen the third year? Yeah. You don't take it to the church. That year, from January to December, yeah. you are second 10%. The first 10% you peleka, you just take to the church. But the 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 ten the second time during the third year we can say in 2010 no let us start we are in 2019 yeah. Yeah. in 2017 you took all your 10 percent first time to the church okay yeah. the second time you took it to the church, church. that is 2017 2018 now we are in 2019 what you will only take to the church is the first type for the pastors but the second type the other 10 percent you will collect it from january to december okay? okay put it keep it keep it then at the end of the year you gather the pastors the fatherless who is mentioned there the widows. widows the strangers you will gather them and give unto them if you are seeing gathering them is a problem to your house you can decide i'm going to visit a certain orphanage i'm going to visit a certain widow at the end of the year i'm going to visit do this thing for the lord with the second type and you use that type that way and the third column what did it have offering offerings offerings is a show of the love we have for God. It must be brought to church to do the work. So you have the first tithe and the second and the offerings always to come to the church. Okay? The first time you take to the the second tithe you take to the church the first year, the second year, but the third year you withhold it. You retain it in the house so that you will choose whoever you want to to give. If it is a widow, it is a, an orphan or such as or, or a pastor or a stranger maybe somebody just comes in the house and you can't give him time first time you can't give him the offerings it has to come from the second time is there a question do you understand what i'm saying yeah. we understand what the bible is saying yeah. yes and do you know that the pastors have to time yeah. yes go to uh, 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 numbers chapter 18 verses 26 the pastors have to die if I am a Bible worker or a pastor and I'm being paid time with a ministry or with a church by the way, the pastor do not have to take tithe at a, people have brought tithe and offering and he is the one to pick the tithe. Numbers. Numbers 18. 26. Can you read it? Speak to the Levites and say to them, when you receive from the Israelites the tithe I give you as your inheritance, 
you must present a tent of that tithe as the Lord is offering. Yeah. So when the Levites, when the pastors receive the tithe, they have been given, they have been paid by the ministry or the church tithe. They also have to take 10% and tithe it. To whom now? To whom now? That is a good question. To yeah. whom? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the Levites had to take to Aaron, yeah. who was the high priest. Yeah. But who is our high priest? Jesus. Jesus Christ. And we cannot take money to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. So what do we do as pastors and teachers and the Bible workers who are paid from tithe? What what does our tithe do? Well, we pay the well with our windows. No, uh, let me speak. Let me speak because I speak what I do. When you receive tithe, yeah, you tithe, you tithe faithfully, yeah, and give offerings. Yeah, what do you do with your tithe? What I do mm. because we are uh, we have not run this uh, program as it is written in the Bible. I do give tithe as ordinary as, church member, member. as as a member. I don't consider the widows or the orphans or somebody stranger. This is what I'm saying, and this is what stands. Now you miss this this color. Yeah, yeah. You, you yeah, miss this. You are. Well, so you have paid yes. My brother, let me speak because I'm I'm the pastor now. Yeah. <laughs> you are a member. Yes. This money, we have one pool. Mm. We we give the the offering, the tithe, all of them. They are being kept in a treasure until the month end. Yes, is when we will look on how God helped these people to give out. Also, I was given an error and a error. To give out my ten or my my offering does not end at my annual of tithe. So after we have given it for a month, we come, we find that we collected four thousand, eight thousand, thirty thousand. We give it as per the doctrine of the region. The the remaining money becomes as a of a pastor. We don't, as the Bible of uh, Isaiah 50, 58, verse 1 onwards. Uh, is this says, the fasting that I have ordained? Yeah. A man to come before me like a reed. Is yeah. not this the fast I have ordained that you may help the poor, yeah. uh, dress the naked, and uh, release those who are in We are not for those ones. We are not for those ones because the rich did, did not. Uh, compare uh, about the widows and the ovens. No, so, now we are in the Bible. Now, since we are now here, mm. we may change. I, as a person, it's not you may. You I have to change. Okay. <laughs> it's a command. It's not a request I'm requesting. You. No, no. The Bible is commanding you. I, I have not, I'm not requesting you to obey the Bible. Yeah. I'm commanding you to obey the Bible. Uh, because the region. It has a, a program on how we do things, but now I must let me say that it, it will be stronger than yeah. As I was saying, <laughs> yeah. I may, I may. That's a very <laughs> poor English. <laughs> <laughs> and Mama, you see, we are following traditions of men, which is dangerous. And you know, Malachi said that we are robbing God by doing yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. It is robbery. And the commandment is, thou shalt not steal. Yeah. Have you ever seen that commandment? Yeah. Yeah. Thou shalt not steal. It is part of the Ten Commandments. Yeah. But we steal. Yes. We Some we have been so. doing without knowing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first tithe. Yes. Uh, the Bible said, the Levites only will be given. Yes. And the second, strangers, when widows, and Levites. Yeah, the Levites are there. They are the benefit everywhere. Yes. <laughs> so you want to be a Levite? <laughs> they benefit because you know why they were everywhere? Yeah. When Israel, when uh, the children of uh, Israel went into Canaan, the Levites was, were not given a land. 
Okay. Yes. They the lived in tents. They, they, huh? they, they were eating they were, from the other. Yeah. They were eating from the other. Yeah. So if I have my second time, mm -hmm. I shall see the leverage that is in need. Mm -hmm. They are leverage who are in need. But uh, we have uh, we have some uh, Levites that are uh, thieves. They say all these men are theirs because the God will not take those money, so they must eat. No, no, but what does the Bible say? <laughs> so let me repeat this, Thank Brother you. Peter, okay. in uh, very fast because you went out of the room. Yeah. We had uh, three columns. Yeah. You have 300 yeah. shillings. Let us say, let us assume you are a church member, not a pastor. Yeah. You have 300 shillings. Yeah. The first column is 10%, 10%, which is 30 shillings. Yeah. That is for the pastors, yeah. the Levites, the priests. The second 10%, which is called the second tithe, mm -hmm. you give to the church during the first year, the second year, but the third year, you withhold it. You don't take it to the church. Yeah. And when the year ends, you have been withholding it, keeping it somewhere, in a box or what, whatever you know in yourself. When the year ends, that second tithe, during the third year, you can go and visit orphanage, you can visit the uh, uh, widows, you you can entertain another pastor, you, you tell the pastor, come and your family, I have a special meal for you. You don't take from your pocket, you take from the second tithe. Okay? Then we have the third quarter, which is the offerings, the offering. which you have to take to the church. Every Sabbath, yeah. because what will be the orphans and the widows feeding for for the three years? Yeah. They'll be feeding on these yeah. offerings, helping from this farm. Yeah. The first one is for the priest. The second one is to entertain these people, and the third one is to help the church building and all this. So, I hope we are. Do we pay time faithfully? No. No. And for us because <laughs> so now I come to you, you are a pastor yeah. of a church. Yeah. You have collected the tithe and offering. Yeah. Don't tithe the offerings. It's not yours. Don't tithe the second tithe. It is not yours. It is for helping building orphans and visiting the poor, that, that, the widows. That, that offering. That Sec offering. Second tithe and, and the, offerings. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to get clearly because you may be a pastor of a church. Yeah. And you don't want to go and do something that is not in the Bible. Yeah. The first tithe, on the envelope of somebody will indicate what is he giving, first tithe or second tithe. They have to indicate because you don't want to mix things. Mm -hmm. God does not like confusion. Yeah. They will indicate, tell your members to indicate this is first tithe, which is 10%. If you have 10 bob, one tithe, shilling is tithe. Mm -hmm. If you have 100, 10 bob mm -hmm. is a tithe. Yeah. The second tithe, teach them. After tithing the 10%, you remain with 90. Yeah. The second tithe, tithe is from the 90, which means it will be 9 shillings. Yeah. Are you getting me very clear? Yeah. That second tithe is for helping the very needy, the widows and the orphans in the church and helping in buying all these things you need. That's the chair, the PA and all these things. It is for the church use. The offerings the same. You can now use these offerings on the same or holding meetings like we are holding here yeah. a meeting. Yeah. We need food, yes. we need soaps, we need all this. They should be, be able to be cared for, not from the type, yeah. but from the offerings. offerings. People have to be faithful because if you don't have offerings, how will you hold seminars and host people? When I come, I want transport if I don't have transport. Yeah. Where will you get it? From your pocket. The members have to be faithful. They, you know this idea of just receiving and you, you are cast. Blessed is the hand that giveth, not the hand that receiveth. You think that receiving has a blessing? <laughs> no, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that blessed is the hand that giveth. Give Even our Lord says that blessed is the hand that giveth. Yeah. The hand that receiveth is always there receiving. And that is why it, it, it is always there receiving, because it is not giving. Yeah. You know, by giving, you are sowing a seed of getting something back. Yeah. And so, teach your members. We have the first step. It doesn't matter how poor they are. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'd like to show you something on this point in First Corinthians chapter eight. Go there. I want us please to read because here is where things get hard. People say that we are poor. Somebody is saying he's poor. He is eating. He is dressing. And he is having a, a phone and it has airtime. Yet the person is saying that he is poor and the treasury of the Lord is lacking money. First Corinthians chapter 8. I want you to see this. First 8. First Corinthians 8. Is it? Hold on, hold on. This is it. Um, um, Second Corinthians chapter eight. Just changed to Second Corinthians, not one. Oh. Two. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Yes. Yeah. Just change this to two. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter eight. Two. Yes. Verse 1 to verse 3. It says, Yes. More of what we tell, we make known to you the grace of God. Best group on the churches of Macedonia. That we will like to inform you about the church of where? Macedonia. Read about this church. Continue verse 2. That in a great trial of affliction, their potency of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liber liberality. Yeah, liberality. Read it, Mama, in a similar version, verse 2. Chapter 2. Huh. Chapter 2, verse. No, chapter 8, verse 2. Read. Second Corinthians 8, Read 2. 2. In the midst of a very in the midst of, of a very severe trial, mm -hmm. their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty were that in rich generosity. These people were in severe conflict and in extreme, extreme poverty. Do you know somebody who is extremely poor? Yeah. Well, this person, even the house is leaking. Yeah. He doesn't have clothing. Basic needs. Yeah, he la that is the word, Brother Peter. He lacks basic needs. Let us just take it to that level. He lacks basic needs. But they were generous. Yeah. What does it mean to be generous? To help them. They were very mm. joyful when they gave. They were giving in the extreme poor. Yeah. And he's telling them, I want you to know about the church of Macedonia. Mm -hmm. They were in severe trial and extreme poor, but they were joyfully giving. So how do you give from what you don't have? What you have. They were giving and they didn't have, they were poor. You, we are well. Don't you see that? Who is here extremely poor? Because we were, we eat. There is no, in this world, it's a few people who are extremely poor. Yeah. At least you will find everyone has a phone. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it is Kabambe. Yeah. They want just to call and receive. Yeah. And, last, uh, and you cannot have a phone without having a credit. Yeah. Because you will not even flash someone. These people are extremely poor. And verse 3 says, For their power, I testify that they give as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability. Now, brothers and sisters, tell me, how do you give beyond your ability? And they were freely willing to pay, to give. These people say, if it is sleeping hungry, then let us sleep hungry, but the church of God is going forward. They were willing to give even what they didn't have. Have you ever been willing to give what you don't have? You know why we don't get things is because we are not willing to have them. Yeah. But if we are willing to have and to give, God will bring them. We have not, and I wish we had a lesson on prayer. What it means to pray by faith. Mm -hmm. Do you know a prayer of faith is not asking God give me something. 
a prayer of faith is thanking God that he has given you when you don't have it. People don't know how to pray. They only know how to go on their knees and tell God, give me this, give me this. No one goes on their knees and tells the Lord, Father, I thank you because you have given me a million shillings. Yeah. That is something that is not known by men. Yeah. I thank you because I'm barren, but next year I'll have a child. Yeah. People do not know such a prayer. Yeah. Yes, they are there. You find people like Hannah. You find people like Philip praying. People in the Bible are praying. Paul is praying and, uh, you know, there's a certain man, a story is told that uh, he went to a certain city, an evangelist, Brother Peter. You, you are saying that you are an evangelist. I'll give you a challenge. He went to a certain city and knelt down in that city and told the Lord, I thank you, God, because you have given me this city. And if you will not give me, count me out of your kingdom. And the kingdom in that city was full of people who were so bad. The city was full of crime and the city was full of people who were in idolatry doing evil things and the, the, past, the evangelist was told you are not going to survive in that city. And then he went and knelt in the city and told the Lord, I thank you because you have given me this city. And if you can't give it to me, then count me out of your kingdom. This is a true story that is told. I wish you could read the book called The Great Controversy. By God's grace, you should get that book. How the mighty people of God conquered. Have you ever read the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the men of faith and the women of faith? Those people, they walked in the midst of lions. They walked, they were despised everywhere, but are not in the prayer of faith. But there are lessons. If we will be evangelists, we have to learn these stories. Yeah. You will have to go to Sodom and Gomorrah and tell the Lord, this city, everyone is going to be saved. I don't care how you are going to save me, save it, but I have come and you are going to save it. Yeah. And let Satan be disappointed, not for my glory, but for your glory. Amen. We don't know how to pray. I wish we could learn about the signs of prayer. And not doubting, but living with your handbag without even money to go and build in that seat, without money for rent having only a sleeping bag and go to the city and tell the Lord, you have given me this city. First of all, give me a house that I live in. Guide me to somebody who will shelter me as I work in this, the city. And you see, you know, God told Abraham, leave where you are, yeah. the youth of Chaldeans, and go down to the south. He didn't tell him, take what and what, take a sleeping bag or what. He told him, leave. Yeah, leave. Abraham did not ask God, do I carry 20,000? Do I carry three clothes or do I carry what? He was told, leave, and he said, you know why Abraham is called the father of faith? He never questioned when God spoke. He did exactly what God spoke, and he went to the south. And when he was still going, the voice of God told him, you have reached where you are going. Yeah. This is the place. And what did Abraham do first? He builds an altar and thanks the Lord, you have brought me where you have seen fit. Yeah. Now, Lord, I do not have water. Where is the water? Mm -hmm. And God tells him, just dig there, there's water. Mm -hmm. You people, do you understand the Bible or we are storytelling? Mm -hmm. Have you ever read the Bible? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we practice these things? Or we are so old no. to practice this? No, we are not. Or we are too young to do this? Or we are faithless? I'm challenging you. There is a work to be done in this world. And we are being told that the kingdom of God suffers violence. Yeah. And it is only the violence that takes the... It is the people who can dare face a situation that will be able to face it. I have a brother in church. The brother was sick, very sick. And the doctors told him, 
We cannot do anything for you. Go home and wait to die. The brother took everything and went at home and told God, you know what? I'm not going to die. It is you who can decide if I'm going to die and not the doctors. Very sick. And he told God, I'm not going to die. I'm going to serve you. And this brother, five years now, his health is back. Yeah. He went to the hospital after three years, the hospital that would told him go home. And when he reached there, he told us, he was telling us, everyone was shocked. They touched him like this and asked, brother, are you the one? Yes. And he said, I'm the one, I want to see the doctor. Can he really test me and see if I'm alive or dead? And they tested him and they found him negative of the diseases he had. And the doctor said, no. What drug have you been using? I told him, no, I became a Christian. And I serve a God who is the God of Christian. Yeah. Let me not go to the lessons of faith. You are on tight and off. Yeah. I'm challenging you people. You yes. have to do something. Yeah. I'm asking a question on tight and offering. Yes. Is it good to use this money before? <coughs> I'm keeping it. We say every week to give after. After. Let, let us say we said the the second tithe. We said we keep. Uh, that is in the third year. Yeah. The first year you are giving, the second year you are giving. Ah, but yes. the third year you are you give. Yes. Second time. Let us say in your in your, in your house or on your bank. So even if I go, I withdraw those money, I use it, is it bad? Use it for what? For my 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 needs or anything. But I say, let me use it, and then I will, I will return back. No. Is it good? No, God's things are God's things. They are not yours. You, you understand, once you give, it is not yours. You, are you understanding what I'm saying? You remember He's what saying. Nebuchadnezzar did? He's Nebuchadnezzar. Saying, and he uh, maybe. He has he, a need. He wanted yeah. to give, he has kept the money. Like already. But and now he has a need. He yeah. wants to lose that money, then he will return, return back. Then. My brother, you, you may not return it back. <laughs> Who told you that you will return? <laughs> Which guarantee do you have? It is like, this is using the holy vessels for something unholy. Yeah. It is taking from what is for God and using it for your own. If this is the money, that has to go to a specific object, use it for that specific object. You, you see, this is how people end up using tithe and saying that this 10% are return, and they don't. When you, well, the 10% when you use, there is uh, chapter 8 is very good. Yeah. 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 But it's not if you have used it. If you have used it unknowingly. And you have been withholding tithe and offering. Like I say, I have not known about tithe and offering or I have been using it ignorantly and the Lord brings me to a conviction. Like I have been employed, I'm getting my salary. Yeah? And then uh, I've not been paying tithe. It, it says like, um, the mama is saying, if you reach a time that you are convicted of that, you will have to pay an interest on it. Let me find the verse. Because it, it will be good to find these verses because these are the most challenging, challenging. things that we get. Uh, as you are, as you are uh, just looking for the first yes. chapter, in Daniel chapter 5, I am going to answer the question from the Bible. Daniel chapter 5, verse 1. Up to <coughs> four. Can yeah. somebody read? 
because you have said that you may use that, those amounts the Daniel chapter 5 verse 1 to 4 that is a king here who is called Pet Sassar yeah. yeah. he was a king but he tried to do as his father was doing God passed around with his cars Yes, in Daniel chapter 5, yes, go read it. I have got the verse. Yes. <coughs> Pet Sasa, the king made a, a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in the presence of thousands. Why, why you are requesting with your all things that is going to squeeze you and uh, uh, try to target the tides of God? as he was excited to his uh, use drinking. So, continue. When he tasted the wine, mm -hmm. Elsasa gave the command to bring the gold and silver vessels, which his father, Kapul Nessa, had taken from the temple, which had been in Jerusalem, that the king and his lords his wives and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought the old vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of God, which had been in Jerusalem. And the, king, five. and the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold, of gods of gold and yeah. silver, bronze and iron, good and stone. In the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and rolled a man is a hand. opposed the ram stand on the plaster of the wall of the king kings. Palace, and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's counter, countenance changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his hips were loosened, and his knees knocked against each other. Yes, so you find that if you take the holy things of God and start using them, in a way that it should not be used. There is no peace. There is no peace. You will become weak in the joints. You yeah. will become you will become diseased. Yeah. The Lord will put a curse on you. Yeah. And uh, the first text should not never be used for anything. The money for the church should not be indulged in doing in doing your own things. And that's where we are told that live by your means. Unless a calamity reaches you. God says that we should have justice, mercy, and all this. Unless a calamity is upon you, don't use even the title of God. He, your faith is being tried. Live within your means and see how God can help you relieve this calamity. And even the church members should come in to help the brethren. She was saying that if you have to use the things dedicated to God, I want to you to read from that uh, version, Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. Thirty two, thirty two. Let me just twenty seven, thirty two, thirty two. And twelve thirty, a title of everything from the land, whether the rain from the soil or all fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. Yes. It is holy to the Lord. Whoever would redeem any of their weight must have a fifty of the value of it. Every diet of the art and the cloth, every dead animal that passes under the shepherd's road will be holy to the Lord. No one may pick out the good from the bad or make any substitution. If anyone does 
make a substitution for the animal and it is substitute become holy and cannot be clean. Yes, so there is a danger doing such a thing and uh, exchanging all these things. The Lord does not permit us to do that. Uh, I'd like us uh, to end with this. We have to be faithful tithers and yeah. offerers. We have to teach the congregation the same and we have also to be faithful to the government. If there is any tax we should pay, we should also pay. I don't know if uh, there is task in that. And um, maybe one more thing. Uh, I don't know if you have ever heard about the feasts that we have to keep the feasts. Have you ever heard that? Yeah. That we should keep the feasts? That doctrine? Huh? Have you ever heard people saying that we have to keep the yes, feasts? Yes, we have mm -hmm. kept. We have kept the feast of Tabernacle, the feast of Trumpet, and the others. Mm. But when we, I was with you, there is a challenge which we passed on when we were in Sister Divina's house. Mm. Uh, Brother Daniel said that if you keep the feast, he read a verse from the book that you become an Israelite. Uh, now you are remembering what we, we, we learned. Yeah. And uh, have you ever, in your church, do you learn about keeping feasts as something that is required of children of God in the end time? No, 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 no. So we can deal with them in the sanctuary. Brother, yeah. have you ever heard about this? Yeah. W w what is your take? Are we supposed to keep the feast? Yeah, we are supposed to. Which ones? Let us say the feast of Trumbet, Tapanico, and uh, Pentecostal. Pentecostal. Those are feasts. Should we keep them in SDA? As, are we required to do that in end times? No, as, as, the, as my teacher taught me, yeah. let me speak that. Yeah. As my teacher taught me, through the Bible, yeah. he said no. Because those was the feast of the Israelites, but sometimes other uh, churches, other religion, they do keep. While they do keep, you you, you know, that is somewhere where I read that they did not culture be a carrier of the gospel, but be a carrier of the gospel. So you can, I can't change them while I'm there. I must keep while I'm looking at a strategy of getting these people and telling them that it is not now time passed for this. Okay. Yeah. I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, lastly, the last thing. Do yeah. you have a, a devotional program? That's the problem. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I said that I will say what I have. Truth will always set you free. Yeah. Truth sanctifies. Yeah. Order does not sanctify. Yeah. Lies will not sanctify. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, partially, 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 I have my devotional, but I'm not uh, entered in. Yeah. Brother Peter? Yes. Do you, you have a devotional uh, program? Like a timetable, today I'll wake up at one, uh, at uh, six, the first thing I do is this, and uh, I'll do this, and I'll do this. Do you have such an emotional problem? It's not of me, but it's like a Bible book I'm having. Uh -huh. That's from January to December every day, uh -huh. what I'm supposed to do. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, no, he's saying... No, no, he goes no, back. No, no, you have that, uh, that uh, devotional. Do you have a time a timetable? On six start I will wake up for prayer for that minutes. No, no, no. what I mean is what he answered. Okay. Okay. Do you follow it? That devotion? Not all this. Uh, for example, now we are here. I'm not with it. Sorry. No, but when you are at home, when you are not in yeah. such a session, you are consistent. Yeah. And Mama, do you have your devotional program? I have one on Sunday morning. I do work. This one. Sunday, Sakuni. I do go to church and pray. But uh, every Sunday. 
but daily Bible program study. And uh, I'll challenge you yeah. for you. And Fred told you yesterday, if you are you are going to spend with people ten hours, be ready to pray for ten hours. Be ready to study for ten hours. Yeah. Because what will you give for ten hours if you didn't have it for ten hours? It is difficult. We must have a consistent program. And uh, in the sanctuary, we learn that uh, we had the morning and the evening sacrifices. Yeah. This taught us to have Bible, regular Bible studies yeah. and regular prayers. We have regular, like, um, uh, you, you must have a regular Bible plan yeah. so that you may be equipped and be ready to offer the word of God to the people in a right way. And so um, it's a challenge that I'm giving you, the people who want to be Bible workers and uh, the people who want to be evangelists, it's a challenge I'm giving you. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you may call me and uh, maybe my program is so fixed. Not because I'm going to a campaign, mm -hmm. gospel campaign, but I have a program that maybe I'm following and I haven't achieved what I want. And so. Uh, I don't see myself fit to stand before the congregation when I'm half cooked. Mm -hmm. You know, when we, you go to the congregation without mm -hmm. the information, mm -hmm. actually you are presenting to the congregation a meal which is not well cooked. Mm -hmm. Do you know what a meal which is not well cooked mm -hmm. does to the body of this person? Yeah. Disease. Yeah. You will get diarrhea. You will get every diseases that you can get. It is in digestion and all that. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Mm. If you offer people, mama, bad food, they will be sick. Mm. If in the spiritual sense you offer people half-cooked doctrines, mm. they are sick spiritually. That's why our churches are sick. Because people stand on the pulpit, they have not studied something, and they want to teach it, and what comes in the congregation is confusion. Mm. And so this is... We, we must have a Bible program, study what we have to study. I'm not, I'm, not, um, I'm not advising you to rely on self to teach the people. You can make very well your notes. Today I'm going to teach about sanctuary, healthy reform, truth about God, and you make your notes so good, okay? But when you reach on the pulpit, God sees that my servant has prepared himself or herself, and then he gives you light. Yeah. Even that is not in the notes. Yeah. Why does God do that? Because he has seen him an effort. He has told you do something and you have done it. And now he says that I can use this person because this is a, a person who, is a, who has plans. Yeah. A person who is responsible. Not just wake up and go to the pulpit. That is not what we should be doing. Read our Bibles. Study what you are going to teach. If you are going to teach, and it is not a must you answer every question. You are a human being. You don't have the brain of God. If something is there and you don't know, simply tell the congregation, I haven't studied it, I don't know. Let us study it and we'll come and discuss about it. That is how God's people work. But again, to go to the pulpit and you don't know what you have to teach, you are gazing at it, it is not good in the eyes of the Lord. So, uh, we thank the Lord and uh, we praise Him for all this session. And uh, I know we shall now come to the sanctuary. If your mind is tired, we can go and prepare for the Sabbath. But if your mind is not tired, you can stretch around and then we can come at around 2.30. We at least have 30 minute session and eat our dinner and then go for Sabbath preparation. Otherwise, I want us to pray and break. We can pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks and glory and honor for everything that you have taught us. We we'll always ask that uh, that which has been not made right, Father, you may send thy Holy Spirit to correct everything. We as human beings, we are prone to error. We are so weak, our speech is not even good. Our words must be seasoned with the sword of thy Son, Jesus Christ, with his righteousness to be understood better. We want just to know you and live according to thy will. And so help us as your children, for we have requested in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.